When is it good enough to send to alpha readers? When is it good enough to send to beta readers? Delete about 90% of my first drafts. I feel like I have to write a book in a, in a fundamentally different way. They've built something. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And for the next couple days, I'm going to be trying to write like the vlog brothers, John and Hank Green. I think these two are some of the most requested authors I get from my I Tried Writing Like series. And in fact, I did put this up to a patron vote and it did win, <laughs> unsurprisingly, because John and Hank Green are like our internet uncles or something. You know, I grew up watching the vlog brothers, the FTBA. I'm just so excited for this video so that I can research more about them. I have listened to all of their podcasts, watched almost all of their YouTube shows, have followed religiously in recent months as they have gone through the classic all star lyrics. And I am just, I'm just excited about this. So uh, today actually is going to be John Green because he has slightly more of a routine than Hank does. I. My hair's a little wet, so I don't have optimal puff levels, um, but just pretend. Let me show you what John says his routine is. Routine. On the frequently asked questions on his website, he says he usually gets up in the morning and writes for four hours, and then he eats lunch. And then in the afternoon, he does web and YouTube and businessy stuff for five hours. So his work day is from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with an hour for lunch. He mentions that he doesn't always stick to the schedule. He travels a lot. Some days he has to do a lot of non-writing stuff. Yes. What I also love on the same frequently asked questions, just above that when he talks about writer's block, is that he says he deletes 90% basically of whatever he writes. Also a whole thing on writer's block. Coal miners don't get coal miners block. We've talked about this before. Anyways, that's to say that both of their routines are incredibly flexible, which gives me basically the opportunity when trying to write like them to just infuse quotes that I have loved from them, take their spirit into account more so than anything else. So for those of y'all, who have somehow missed the cultural phenom that is John Green's impression on the YA industry. He is the author of The Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, An Abundance of Catherines. I'm doing all of these off the top of my head. I'm definitely missing one. Looking for Alaska. Oh, where do I have it? Oh no, I'm spinning. I just reorganized my bookshelf and now I'm trying to find the book that I uh, want to reference. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, Let It Snow, which he wrote one short story or one novella along with Maureen Johnson, another favorite of mine, and Lauren Miracle. Lots of New York Times bestsellers. I have a lot of favorite things about John Green and Hank Green, the Vlogbrothers in general, again, our internet uncles. But one thing is his emphasis on mental health and he had a whole YouTube series that I loved with his best friend where they were trying to, I think it was a hundred days where they were working to get healthier. And so this morning I did go on a long walk because he still makes the point about how intricately tied being physically healthy and sort of active is and what a difference that can make on his mental health. He's talked very openly about having OCD. Oh, turtles all the way down. Oh my gosh. I always notice the first thing to go when I'm starting to take like a mental health sort of tumble is that I will stop running or walking or doing physical activity as much. So make sure to get that in in the morning, feeling great. So now it's 10.28 and I've been working on line edits all morning, but I'm going to switch to a YA fantasy, but YA. Something that I think is very interesting about John Green is I think anyone who's read his books before could pick up a book not knowing it was his, read a few pages and be able to guess that it is John Green. He has a very similar to like the Dickensian thing where I think he has a very specific style as a huge fan of Meg Cabot growing up. I can do something similar with her books. And I think this makes for an interesting case study because there's plenty of people who don't like John Green's writing style, but obviously there's tons of people who do love it and the stories he's created. I think almost every single book that he's had has been made into a movie or a TV show including Let It Snow. I think a lot of that popularity has to do with how specific and sometimes unique his voice is. And I just think it would be really cool personally to one day have that be true for me. 
that I have written enough books that people have loved my books enough and that my personal style or maybe even certain word choices that I put together are unique enough that people would be able to recognize it without seeing my name on the cover. I think it'd be cool. All right, let's get to the brainstorming. This is actually the part where I'm going to start making like different scene cards. Should I turn that up so y'all can see? There we go. Hopefully I'll come up with like 10 or 15 by the time the day is done. Oh, well. There's a squirrel right outside. Hello little buddy. I feel like I'm playing hide and seek. Oh, he's going down. Bye, squirrel. Look at that little tail. Bye. <laughs> so, these are notes that I need for the entirety of the series. I have a character in book two that I want to wrap back into book five. She's super important to the to my main character's arc, to Annalise's arc, and the lesson she's gonna learn with that and then showing that these pirates also occasionally smuggle humans across certain realms. But I wrote her in, in some ways, knowing a lot more of her backstory than would ever be present, but I need a way to loop that into book five, which I think I can do, but I just basically don't have the scene yet. So here's where we're at. I'm actually gonna delete this one and this one that don't have a place yet. Now comes the time to sort of drag and drop. So something that happened in book four is going to have repercussions before the big battle. That needs to go before that one. There. There. Okay. All right. It is now finally in order with the, you know, 10 scenes that I have so far. And these are kind of big picture scenes, so actually I could break all of these down into probably three or four scenes. Early stage brainstorming. This will work. File. Save. <laughs> all right, it's 11.33 now. All of the dogs are in here. I'm going to try and finish up some of my line edits before I get to the hour lunch break. But we are going to try it on the desk bike. Yeah, you can lay down, bud. Actually, let me move this. Good job, buddy. Yeah. With a little corgi sit, too. Yeah. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. You're so cute. I am finishing that short story, totally done with the line edit, the first round of line edits, with 1,769 for today. By the way, Duke's still there. Hey, being silly folks. <laughs> oh, 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 your sister getting... <laughs> John says on his FAQ, his afternoons consist of YouTube stuff, business stuff, other worky things that are not writing. So I did the same thing. I started off editing this YouTube video, in fact. I had to pull the video from my camera, get it onto my computer, get it onto iMovie, and start editing. Then I answered several business emails that I had admittedly been slightly avoiding as I was still trying to get all of this work done in the house. My face looked something like this all afternoon as I was just staring at the screen doing, you know, sort of task after task, completing things off of my list. And I did a poor job of updating as it is now 7.42 p.m. I'm actually watching Brooke's live stream. I'm trying to research a bit more about Twitch. But I think what I'm gonna switch to soon is actually reading because John Green makes the point that this is really the only apprenticeship that we have as authors, as writers, is just reading as many books as we can. Let me pull up. He did an interview with Penguin Teen where he mentioned this. I've seen a lot of these 
like similar things from him, similar quotes sort of reiterated lots of places. But I really loved this story. And then in college I studied writing and I wanted to have a creative writing concentration, but I actually didn't get into the advanced fiction writing class at my college. There were 12 slots and 15 applicants and I was in that bottom three. And after that I was very discouraged for a while. One of the most interesting things to me about being a creative person is just the amount of failure you have to be met with so in your face all the time. Not being accepted into these sorts of programs, not being accepted into actual apprenticeships, not getting picked up by an agent, not getting your query letters even answered, not gaining traction on your YouTube videos and so on and so forth. It's truly crazy sometimes, but I think there's something to be said for perseverance. And then if you love the thing, you're gonna continue doing it anyways. There's also that combined with, like when I took James Patterson's masterclass, one of the things that I thought was so interesting was where he reinforced that so many publishers passed on his first novel and yet he won the award for the best first novel for that year, which is, it's so fascinating, right? Because those publishers probably wouldn't have passed on it if they one, believed that or two, knew it would go on to become the best novel of the year according to, you know, whomever. That's the other thing, not just being faced with failure, but also recognizing that not all failures the same, I guess. Where am I going with this? <laughs> obviously, John Green is hugely successful now, and I know that he obviously, you know, spent hours, years working on his craft. That was one of the things that I like about doing this I Tried Writing Like, because though John Green has written, you know, six, seven, however many novels, and though Hank Green now has two, and they obviously write so much more when they're doing the scripts for their YouTube shows, and like, we'll get into that when we talk about Hank's routine, but they're writing so much, and yet compared to other people I've tried writing, like, they don't have near the amount of books out yet. And of course, as someone who makes her money doing a lot of different things, it's nice having John and Hank to look up to as people who make their money doing a lot of different things. And Nerdfighteria is just awesome, so yeah, okay. <laughs> Mostly I'm now chilling with the pups, researching a little bit more about Twitch. I will go on to start reading soon, but I just wanted to give y'all an update. Until tomorrow, friends. Yeah. I needed all of the sugar that I could get because this morning when I woke up, I tried to figure out how to stream to Twitch. So then I had to download OBS and do like a bunch of other things. I still don't even know that I have it set up all the way. But Hank Green, Hank Green, founder of the once internet creators guild, community organizer, educational media creator. Apparently he sometimes streams on Twitch, I think with his kids, I think John does too, but really feels in the Hank Green spirit to try to learn more about these different internet-y sort of things because again, he does not have a routine. But Hank has made several videos like this on the Vlogbrothers channel. I think in fact, this one, he said that he found writing the second book easier, which is not something you hear about a lot. A lot of people have sophomore slumps, so it's just very interesting. But he says he has no routine. I think he also mentions that he has to write at least a thousand words a week, otherwise like the story's no longer inhabiting the space in his brain it needs to be. A thousand words a week, he does all these other things that are still writing, which he does make that point. But ultimately, I think spending two hours trying to learn how to stream to Twitch would be okay here. <laughs> Jeez. can kind of see. I think I have it more or less set up. I'm just gonna have to go live and attempt it at some point to try out, but. In our project discord, the Luke Skywalker let Holly know, look, that everyone is attempting, everyone, a lot of them are attempting a 10K day in the sprint. So I'm gonna pop in and say all of the good luck. They're crushing it, they're crushing it. I think I'll try and join the next sprint. I think, do I remember the code? I think it's ping me. Let's see if I can do this. I have to learn by practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. I've also found some people that are doing what I kind of wanna do. So I'm gonna pull up the short story that I wrote live on YouTube and I'm gonna try it now during 
the next sprint. Theoretically, no one should be there. I just need to see if I can actually go live because that's the part I don't <laughs> Oh, I'm forgetting the stress, and this is still way less stress, but I remember like posting my first YouTube video. I don't even think I posted the first ones I recorded or edited. And even then, the stress for like, I don't know, every time I posted for like three months, because I didn't post that regularly, it was like, is anyone gonna see it? I feel somewhat similarly, but that's the thing. We all gotta start somewhere. So I think in theory, I can go to OBS. Oh no, yes. <gasps> wow, it's me, I'm here. Should I make sure that I look like a normal person first? Okay. <laughs> okay. I did manage 333 words throughout the entirety of the Twitch stream. I had so much fun. Hope you can't see. This was so great. I really enjoyed it. I think I actually like the setup better than YouTube and, uh, and StreamYard. So I think it'll be really fun to do for Preptober and then daily for NaNoWriMo. So that's still gonna be the goal. Um, I'm gonna try it out a few more times before I make that super definitive. But yeah, yeah, okay. We're gonna wish everyone a good luck at the 10K day because I actually need to go to the old apartment still. Look at that little butt. Now the thing about doing all of these different methods of making money and being involved in different things is that when it comes to scheduling, I am not yet at Hank Green levels. <laughs> was accidentally such good timing as I am also line editing. I imagine that Hank is copy editing at this point in the backlog of podcasts that I'm listening to. Also, I just now realized that this is slightly tilted. If I tilt, would that make it better? <laughs> Anyways, as I'm line editing more and more and we'll eventually have to go to copy editing, there's this weird line of being like, when is enough enough? When is every word perfect enough? When do you just have to be like, you are tinkering and you need to stop? That's something that in the future, I will have other people to act as guidance on. Obviously I've worked on stuff before where it's like, this is what I think is good. You obviously have final say, read over it, let me know, you know, kind of thing. But I'm at the point with some of my creative projects where it's just deciding. And to be fair, I guess every step of the way is deciding like, when is it good enough to send to alpha readers? When is it good enough to send to beta readers? When is it good enough to send to your editor? And with at least traditional publishing, there is some amount of like, someone else is making the timeline for you. And yet you are ultimately responsible for producing the thing. <laughs> Anyways, I picked the perfect podcast. I think my scheduling is done. Ooh, ah, oh, look at this coloring. I put all the stickers to help me, but then when I go to the week, I just found this, by the way. This is from like way back when, and I was like, wow, I love the extra visual because I'm still waiting for my um, weekly passion planner instead of the daily, but I like having this fuller look. Honestly, I tried to do this over here. I'm making do with what I can until I get my baby. So my regular days are basically going to be like Monday and Friday. I want to do a Twitch stream. Tuesday, I have my chat with my brothers. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday are usually also my YouTube days. And Wednesday, I'm going to try and do Instagram. And then I had extra things that I needed to do. LCD, KC, Medium, P and 2. Doesn't make sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me. You know, the thing I'm amazed by when I think of everything that Hank Green does, and John and Hank, I mean, they have employees. Like, I can barely take care of myself. <laughs> they have employees at this point. Like, they've built something so big that it requires employees. That's really cool. Being a boss, I know they've talked about this, is both, like, scary because there's lots of pressure on you, um, but also rewarding 
But also like, again, I could barely take care of myself. <laughs> Now, since I fully accepted that this is more going to be taking the spirit of Hank in mind rather than actually following his routine, I need to lower this slightly on my desk back. I'm going to do line edits. Also want to talk about this uh, podcast interview that I watched with Hank Green on it a while ago, but what he said has stuck with me, or at least I felt scene and that's why it stuck with me. <laughs> Let's get this new text going. Three, line edit. Yay! On a conversation with, he is asked about his, if he feels pressure from John's uh, success. When, no, um, really? I felt, I felt pressure, but it wasn't that pressure. But I do feel a lot of pressure because of my existing audience. And that's very different when you read a book and you don't know anything about the author and you're not thinking about the author. I, I feel like I have to write a book in a, in a fundamentally different way where I'm both like thinking about the characters and the plot and, you know, like whatever, like the tension and the, t and the pacing and all that stuff. And then I'm sort of also on this meta level imagining what people are imagining about me as they read the thing. He goes into more depth about this, but I think the whole conversation is fascinating. Not just author two, but everyone is recommended to build a platform of some sort of some capacity when you publish a book. Now, of course there are exceptions to this, but that is by and large the advice given. You cannot follow the advice. That is always okay. So let me say that, but also, that is still the advice. So it's interesting then for AuthorTube where our entire platforms are built on our writing, whether that's more writing vlog content, writing education, whether it's more industry writing, so on and so forth. It's still based around us in some ways and our writing as we are the thing seen on camera, the thing, the person. <laughs> and I know some friends who have published books and they're going to immediately get one stars on Goodreads people writing negative stuff on Amazon, regardless of the contents of their novels, just because people don't like them. And while that I think comes with the territory in some respects, it's just interesting to think that people would be reading my books because they like me. Now, some amount of it might be because they really like the concept of the books, or it's a combination of both. And either way, I'm happy that someone is reading my book, right? My future book. <laughs> it's kind of like with actors for me, there are some actors where they can still be a really good actor. But at this point, it's like with Jennifer Aniston. I never actually see what character she's portraying. I just see Jennifer Aniston portraying a character. Now is that because she has had crazy levels of success? Yes. And yet. I guess it's not the experience any of us imagine when we're painting the picture, but I think Hank talks about it better. So I am going to link down below um, the entire podcast. Obviously Hank is... I just really like Hank. <laughs> okay, back to the line editing. And now it is time to do more editing. <laughs> and then I finished up my Hank Green day with some intermittent editing through the rest of the evening. The next day we did go and get pizza. I am missing a Pizza John shirt, but maybe I can correct that this holiday season. So I do want to chat about a few things. First off, I apologize that this is less routine based and more just like me casually gushing about John Green and Hank Green. But <laughs> I've always found it a very interesting discussion. I actually think I heard it at the North Texas Teen Book Festival or maybe the Texas Teen Book Festival one year when Veronica Roth was there. She said that she had had chats with John Green about how success on the level both of them have experienced John with The Vault on Our Stars and Veronica with the Divergent series. And Hank does mention that too in that interview, which again, I'll link down below, about how that level of success is often harmful. A lot of us want our books to be read by as many people as possible, but when you get up to that level, everyone, everyone knows who you are and everyone has an opinion on you. And that's kind of a scary thing to be. <laughs> to have. Tied into this in some ways, this level of success is that for a lot of people, 
like I've said this entire video, me included, I kind of look up to John and Hank Green and now we've all had a bit of a reckoning <laughs> in recent years or maybe it's just part of getting older for our heroes no longer um, stay our heroes. And yet from a business perspective, I really like the way that they run their business. If I ever got to the level where I did have employees or anything like that, I would hope to run it with that level, at least the level of grace we can see, right? I mean, they have stuff like Project for Awesome. They have this whole community of Nerdvitaria that they seem to adore and want to help grow and foster. With great powers comes great responsibility, right? But currently I really like having them to look up to and sort of, you know, see a path that I would like to take doing a lot of the same stuff that they're kind of doing, creating what they want to create. Also, I just love a good sibling relationship. <laughs> and then they bring all of their friends and family into their different project. Look, I've said multiple times over that my dream is to write with every single member of my family. So like, that's it, that's it. I will also say if you guys have been wanting to get into AuthorTube or anything like that, for the past few years, and I think potentially for a lot of years, NaNoWriMo has been one of the nonprofit organizations that has been part of Project for Awesome. I've made a couple videos for them. Totally recommend it, it's great. So anyways, or just check out Project for Awesome generally and support an organization that you love, make a video, try it out. It's a great, it's a great time to do it. That will be coming up in like a month and a half or so. Two months? Soon. <laughs> In 2020 time. <laughs> Very soon. But please do comment down below. Let me know what you think of their routine. Let me know what you think of how they're able to juggle so many different um, types of projects, types of art that they're putting out into the world. Let me know if you have a business person or anyone like that or a writer or an author that you look up to that you would like to emulate their career in some respects. Also please let me know which of John Green or Hank Green's books are your favorite if you've read them. I actually did check out an absolutely remarkable thing on audio from my library. I don't know that I said it in this video but I said it on the Twitch stream that back when I was working on Project Purple people were actually recommending that I check out the book um, because it had some similarities with what I was trying to achieve regarding the like level of instant fame sort of thing. So yeah, thank you again to my patrons for picking this video for me to do. I highly enjoyed the research, which was basically just listening to podcasts and watching videos. <laughs> it was great. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all very soon with a new video. DFTBA, bye. And I just think it would be, and I just think it would be, what are words? They're so hard. I picked the perfect bot. Well, hello.